Hi everyone, this is US immigration attorney Sharifa Tharp and I am on live to take your immigration questions. So go ahead, put your questions in the comments and I will happily answer your questions. So I'm going to tell you a little about me. I'm US immigration attorney Sharifa Tharp and the focus of my practice is to assist clients to get their green card and get status in the United States. You can learn more about me by going to the link in my bio. We will take you to my website where you can read up about me, uh, my practice areas, uh, what I've done, and you can get the contact information to contact the firm to schedule your own personal uh, consultation should you need one. But for now, I come on almost every day, as a matter of fact, every day with a few exceptions to answer your questions. So that's exactly what I'm here to do today. So you can ask any immigration related questions. Um, I usually come with a topic to talk about myself. And um, today I'm going to be talking about, I just released a video about, um, I just released a video uh, talking about applying for the green card on your own, uh, especially in the case where you're being mistreated by um, your U.S. spouse. U.S. spouse means a permanent resident or a U.S. citizen spouse. So hi there, Mariam, Mariama Barry. It's nice to see you again. Um, but I want you to know th uh, this as I am speaking and as I'm speaking about the topic, um, I am going to prioritize your questions. Doesn't have to be related to what I'm talking about. And as soon as I get start getting a ton of questions, I will stop talking to focus on answering your questions because that's why I'm here. Um, so Shana Bana, how long will that take? So if we're talking about the um, green card based on mistreatment, it uh, takes about two to two and a half years. It could take longer just depending on how you're qualifying for this type of green card. So keep those questions coming and let us go ahead and talk about it. So it's called the VAWA green card. And um, what it does is it protects immigrants who are in the United States who are being mistreated, abused by their US citizen or legal permanent resident um, spouse, um, parent spouse, or what if you already, what if uh, you already sponsored you? So um, what if they already sponsored you? So um, I have had cases where the um, spouse that was mistreating the immigrant spouse started the process, but they were mistreating them. And so um, it got, you know, it's so bad that they had to either that the spouse, the US spouse was sabotaging the process or it, the abuse or mistreatment got so bad that they uh, had to go ahead and apply for the VAWA green card on their own. Uh, so good evening. Nice to see you. Sexy bless. It's nice to see you too. Um, nice923. Hello. Is it possible for one to get the green card if you don't have any family in the U.S.? So, uh, yes, through an employer or through humanitarian means or through the, um, the last bet, which would be the diversity lottery. So it's like the lottery um, for green cards. So those are the other ways to qualify. Now, the employment based green cards, they, there are many ways. So you can do it based on extraordinary ability, that one. Um, that there, they, it does allow you to apply for the green card on your own if you can show evidence that you've reached the top of your field, that the U.S. would benefit from your work, and that you can come and continue that extraordinary work in the United States. Um, then there's exceptional ability if you're a professional and um, you can show 
that your work will benefit the United States, then there's a way to apply on your own there. Um, and then there are other types of green cards that if you're skilled, even unskilled or a professional, an employer can apply for you to get the green card, but an employer is required in that, that case. And then um, based on humanitarian, so if you receive um, a, a U, a T, or asylum in the United States, U is for victims of crime, the T visa is for victims of trafficking, and asylum are for individuals who are afraid to return to their home country. If you receive any of those, you there is a path to a green card there. Um, and then the diversity lottery is where you would enter your name and if selected, you'd have a chance to get the green card over a one year period. Uh, so Jacin Jacinta, hey, I got a green card while pregnant, but I left my baby with my mom since I didn't know. Okay, so if your child was not included on the application, then what you would have to do is you would have to sponsor your child now um, to come to the United States since you're a green card holder and you can do that. Mariama Barry, I'm going to be I'm going to be four years and nine months in May. My estimated time for me to file is May. Awesome. Yes, you can start filing at four years and nine months. If you need assistance to go ahead and apply quickly, you can give me a call at 561-405-4889. Hi there, Marita. It's nice to see you. So um, keep those questions coming. I'm talking about applying for the green card through VAWA. And that is for any individual who is being mistreated, um, slash abused by their U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident spouse, if you're under 25, a parent, and also if you are a parent of a citizen's son or daughter who's 21 and up, and they are also mistreating you, there is a way to apply for the green card in that case as well. So, um, there, you know, it's not just for um, people who are being mistreated in marriages to U.S. citizens or green card holders, but also other relatives, such as a U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident parent. Now, if you're doing it, ba applying for the green card based on a parent relationship, you have to be under 25 to be able to qualify. Even if you're divorced, by the way, so even if you're divorced and you've been divorced for less than two years and that spouse mistreated you, then you could qualify to apply for the green card. So um, keep those questions coming. Let's see if I, I'm looking to see if I have any more questions because your questions are my priority. So I want to see your questions. Um, but in the meantime, I have come with a topic and I'm going to talk about how to apply for the green card on your own if you're being mistreated. So let's see here. We have more questions. So let's, I'm going to go through. Um, Dean, I think, thanks for sharing uh, motivation by Mandy. Can I still apply for my green card if I was divorced four years? Unfortunately not. It has, you have to be divorced for less than two years to qualify for this. Uh, Mimi, very sexy. Um, before we apply for you to get your green card, um, let me see. I, something doesn't seem to be complete there. User 1799, can your green card mom file for you? and someone stand as an affidavit for you yes absolutely um you're you're as long as you're not married your um permanent resident parent can file for you so may 26 can i file for my citizenship in um, may 1st or any time in may i don't so when it comes on to date center I don't know all of your circumstances, Mariama, and so you're gonna have to schedule a consultation for us to go through those kind of details. I don't want to give give you any information that's inaccurate 
Um, and to provide you the best legal advice, I need to sit down with you and evaluate all the facts involved. User 724, thanks for following. Um, so Mimi, if you married to, to a pensioner, can we apply to get the green card? Does he need an um, affidavit of support? Yes, he'll still need an affidavit of support and he'll still need to show that he's making sufficient income to support you. Um, Shana, Bana, Shana Banana, is there any way you can get your child, your child passport without one partner if there's an um, order of protection? So there is a special form um, that you can complete to um, discuss the issues involving your spouse. Um, what you can do, contact the passport office and ask them for that specific form, or you can um, look it up and you complete that form and discuss the circumstances as to why you cannot um, contact the other partner to get permission uh, for your child's passport. And sometimes they will waive that requirement and move forward with um, issuing the passport without the partner. And an order of protection de definitely um, appears to be a, a strong basis for that. Um, so Jacinta, Jacinta, um, what do I need to bring her? Uh, so Jacinta, I, let me see. I don't, I didn't see the previous question. Can you retype your question, please? I did, I don't see the rest of it. Um, hi there, Maria. I think that's Mariati. Hi there. Good evening. Ashana, Shan, Ashana. What is the name of the form? So I don't have it off hand. Uh, you'll have to call the um, passport office and ask them for the, the form. Is there any other travel document to use without the father's permission? And there's an order of so um, usually uh, no, if the child is a US citizen, they have to travel with the passport. And so, um, you know, you would want to, you would have to apply for it or get, um, get a waiver of that requirement that the father give permission. Um, so Mimi, very sexy. If you are married to a pensioner, can you file for a green card without the um I think that's without the affidavit. So um, no, usually a pensioner, being a pensioner is not going to waive the affidavit of support. But what you will have to do is if your um, spouse does not make sufficient income to sign the affidavit of support, you'll need to get um, a standing, like a co-sponsor that can be anybody. So it could be um, a cousin, another family member, a friend who's willing to sign the affidavit of support. SM, thanks for following. Kissable lips for, uh, thanks for following. So 94 Maria, 26, how long does it take for the I-130, I-140 for Indian H-1B visa holder um, takes to get approved? So it depends on what's going on in that particular case. Usually um, it's a matter of months. So you go through the lottery program and then if you're selected, it goes through the uh, decision process. Um, so it could take anywhere from you know four months to six months. However, it depends on whether you get a request for evidence. Um, how smooth it is, what's, um, what you're, whether you're, you were even selected. So it all depends. Um, Stacy G, thanks for following. Um, Heavenly Fate, uh, so what's your fee for the K-1 visa? So I don't provide fees until I know exactly what's going on in the case. And that's why I require the initial consultation first because in addition to providing you legal advice i'm also um, looking at the issues that are involved some cases um, it just requires the k-1 visa application but in other cases there are 
additional issues such as waivers that we'd need to apply for or if we have to submit um, a background check or a FOIA request that may um, you know impact the fees so the first the most important thing to do is first evaluate your case and then I can be able to advise you and know the issues involved then I give you the um, the overall fee so bright sky 20 i am jamaican absolutely um so what about the b1 b2 visa so in order to get the b1 b2 visa you'll have to show strong ties to your home country that means that you'll have to show that you have commitments that are strong enough to to get you back to your home country after you visit the u.s temporarily and so the officer likes to see strong ties like um, a mortgage, own property, you run your own business, you have an employer um, that you are strongly committed to. Um, there's debt, there's other types of property, um, there's strong, there are strong family ties involved. Um, these are examples of those strong ties that sh will, will convince the officer that you will return to your home country after, the, um, after your temporary visit. Shanna, um, can you explain advanced parole? So advanced parole is um, basically applying for permission to leave the country and then be able to come back into the country. Um, and this is usually for individuals who are here, they're on a visa, um, but normally they wouldn't be able to travel unless they get the advanced parole. Um, so Michibu 41, what if the father is not active in child's life and refuses to sign for the child to get the passport? So in that case, then there is a special form that is um, available to complete and to request that they not require the father's uh, permission to go forward with it. So that is um, one way. It's not always approved uh, because they do like to see a court order or a custody agreement. Uh, however, um, if those are not available, then um, you have to complete that form and explain um, explain why you why you can't find the father or why he is not available to give permission. I have seen individuals get it approved. Um, however, you have to make sure that you you explain uh, clearly the reason you think that father cannot um, sign for the child's passport. So um, Mimi Berry Sexy, do you have to get married to file for your own green card? How do you go about? Um, so um, if there are ways to apply for your own green card so under the employment um, green card is going to be if you have extraordinary ability or exceptional ability and those usually mean you're at the top of your field or the u.s is going to um, and or the u.s is going to benefit substantially from your work uh, and then there's and usually this is this involves you know individuals with advanced degrees um, professionals, people who have excelled in their fee, um, in their areas, so talented artists, musicians who have gained, um, you know, fame, or they have uh, not only just fame. You don't have to be famous to get this, but that you have are known in your field, you're respected in your field, you've received awards in your field. Um, so those are ways to apply for the green card on your own through an employer through employment and you don't have to have an employer to apply for those um, through family if you're being um, abused or mistreated by your u.s citizen or legal permanent resident spouse if you're under 25 a parent or if you're the parent of a, a, a u.s citizen who's 21 and up then that is um, another way and i just want to touch on that mistreatment for a minute to let you know that mistreatment doesn't mean just physical abuse it can involve um, 
financial manipulation or control, verbal, emotional, mental as well. So um, if my rule of thumb is if this person is not treating you the way that you should be treated, you should definitely um, consult an attorney about this. Um, Suyenya, it's nice to see you. If someone came with visa and overstayed because of COVID, can she apply for forgiveness? So the type of waiver, um, no, there is a waiver for immigrants who have unlawful presence um, and they want to get back their visa. However, in order to get the waiver, it depends on what, what, you're, quali what you're applying for. Are you applying for the green card? Are you applying for a temporary visa? And um, how you qualify for it. So that's going to, wa a waiver may be available, but it depends on the facts um, in your case because it gets a little more complicated. So um, Billy Gringo, um, J1 and J2 visa, what's the process of a green card? So first of all, you want to make sure that you, Michibu, you're welcome. So you want to make sure that you don't have the two year foreign residency requirement. If you do, that is going to maybe a hurdle, maybe a big hurdle to you getting the green card. Um, but other than that, you have to also make sure that you qualify for the green card through an employer, through a family member, um, or other means. So if you even have a humanitarian basis to apply for the, um, well, not the green card, but for status, um, then that could be a path. But for the green card, you'll have to qualify like a, anybody else through family or through an employer. Marie Bella, thanks for following. Bright Sky, what if you overstay with a B1, B2 visa? Um, well, if you overstay, then you would not, you, in some circumstances, if you have a qualifying um, relative who can apply for you and you stay in the United States, then, um, you know, you could possibly adjust status. However, that's a limited, uh, limited set of individuals who can do that. So very important you get legal advice about whether you fall into that category. Individuals who can apply for the green card while being in the United States are going to be immediate relatives of US citizens who came in on a visa and even if they overstayed. So that would be um, applicable here. And immediate relatives of U.S. citizens are going to be the spouse of a U.S. citizen, the parent of a U.S. citizen, or, and when I say parent of a U.S. citizen, the U.S. citizen has to be 21 and up to sponsor you, or you're going to have a son or daughter who's 21 and up. So um, those are the individuals who can adjust status um, if they overstay a B1, B2 visa. So um, Mariama, so when my estimated time is May 26 for me to file for, so I can't file early May. So I, Mariama, you're gonna have to schedule a consultation because I, um, I want to see the facts first. I don't, I cannot tell you specifically when to apply because then I would be providing you legal advice blindly. So I would have to sit down with you in a, in a personal consultation to, to talk through um, your qualifications for U.S. citizenship, um, all the details regarding your permanent residence, and, and then advise accordingly. So uh, just Tony876, thanks for following. So uh, Shen Shen, the sexy diva, so is it safe to look about your green card on your own or I need a lawyer? Um, so uh, you're never going to catch me saying don't get a lawyer uh, because I've seen so many individuals apply for you know, the green card or immigration benefits thinking that they know what they're doing when in truth and fact, it's not as simple. I would say at least start with a consultation with an attorney to make sure that you are fully informed about the process, about the requirements, 
And then you can make that informed decision about whether you want to continue with a lawyer. Um, so that's why I always start with the consultations uh, is to, to keep, um, keep my clients and my prospective clients fully informed about the process and then to be available uh, should they need further assistance. So um, Vanessa, Vanessa, it depends. So you have to meet certain requirements to be able to apply for DACA. And one of those requirements is to show that you've had continuous presence in the United States since um, 2007, that you entered the country before turning 16. And so we'd have to go through those requirements uh, to make sure that you can qualify for DACA. So Shenzhen, the sexy diva, absolutely, you can. Um, I am taking clients, and that's why I do the consultations to make sure that your case is right, that you qualify, and then um, I move forward with your application, with helping you through the process. So um, go ahead, give my office a call at 561-405-4889, schedule a consultation, and then we can uh, talk about it. So yen yeah, yeah. Um, but if the visa expired while the person overstayed here, what should the person do? So it depends. So it depends on the person's situation, uh, depends on why they overstayed, uh, who, what, what, who their relatives are. So that's a very broad question. Um, if they have absolutely no way to qualify for status um, in any other way, then um, you know, yes, the, that presents a challenge because if they leave the country after overstaying more than six months, they will be barred for three years. So, you know, it puts an individual between in our, um, in the position of being between a rock and a hard place. Um, but what that per, what they should do is schedule a consultation and figure out the op, their options based on their particular circumstances. Michibu 41, how long does it take for a replacement of a lost citizenship certificate? So it depends on which service center is processing your um, replacement, the application for the replacement of the certificate. What you can do is if you go to uscis.gov and you look for the service center, um, the service center based on, so you'd have to go to the form, look at where you would file the form, and then look at that service centers and it will tell you, um, give you the list of, there's a link on the homepage that says case processing times. You click on that, click on the service center and you will see the estimated time that they're taking. Um, Bright Sky 20, do brother and sister sponsoring is still a thing. So, um, the, you know, siblings do still sponsor siblings, but they have to be prepared for a long process because the minimum time right now um, is about 14 years. So unless something changes, um, it's going to take a long time, but sometimes that's the only option for some individuals. And so they still go forward with it. Stacy G, when the divorce goes through, he is he's marrying another girl and I'm worried he will bring attention to this. So my Jamaican friend married a US girl for a green card. He paid her 4,000, now she wants a divorce. When the divorce goes through, he's marrying another girl and I'm worried he will bring attention to this. So um, definitely what they're doing is dangerous and they're heading into dangerous illegal territory well already after he paid her $4,000. So um, yes, you definitely have um, reason to worry for um, worry about this um, because it is illegal. Yeah. So Maxine White, thanks for sharing the live. So keep your questions coming. I am here to answer your questions. These are all great questions, great points. So, um, so where, where am I located? I'm in Boca Raton, Florida. 
but I um, represent clients all over the country. Uh, we file our applications all over um, the USA. We work with the USCIS offices all over the country. And so we can do that. Uh, so if you're outside of Florida, um, no worries. I still work with clients all across the country. Uh, and um, for the initial consultation, I do phone and video consultations for those who are not close. Um, so Sam Sally, where are you? I didn't see your previous question. So let's see, can you retype your question, please? So user 1799, what if you overstay your reason being because you have children in the U.S. under 18? So unfortunately, that is not, um, that is not a, a reason to stay, to overstay, and it doesn't automatically give you a basis to apply for um, benefits. So weird, I care. Thanks for the compliment, uh, John. John Neil Whiteley, uh, can you answer mine? So it seems, uh, hang tight everyone. It seems like some of the questions aren't coming across. Sometimes they don't. Uh, so let's see, how can you get your green card? So that's John Neil White Whiteley. That's a very broad question. Um, it depends on how you qualify. Do you qualify through family? Do you qualify through, um, uh, an employer, do you qualify? So for something so broad, if you really want to explore your options, schedule a consultation. Um, so Jamaican Italian Kitchen, it's nice to see you. If my visa is not expired, can I travel outside the US and back on my visa with a pending I-130? So no, uh, great question. No, once there is an adjustment of status pending, and um, once you've overstayed um, the, the initial um, time that you were given to stay in the to stay temporarily in the United States, you cannot travel um, on the the visa. Now, uh, what happens is that when they when the U.S. Embassy issues a say a ten year visa, um, it and then you travel back and forth between. Um, you know, your country and the United States, um, every time you enter, the officer is going to give you a shorter period of time. They're not giving you 10 years to stay in the United States. They're going to give you a month. They're going to give you six months, four months, and you have to abide by the terms that they give you. You have to stay within that time. If you can't, you should apply for an extension. If you overstay without applying for an extension, then what happens is you're in violation of the terms of the visa. And um, once you overstay by over six months, that visa, you know, you're now in unlawful presence territory, you're now inadmissible, and you will not be able to, once you leave the country, you won't be able to come back for three years, you'll be barred for three years. If you overstay over a year, that turns into 10 years. So um, the best way, if, if there is, a, and especially if there's a pending I-130, so a pending I-130 um, is not enough to allow you to travel back and forth. Even a pending I-485, which is an adjustment of status, is definitely not a basis to travel. What you need to do is apply for a travel document. And you qualify to apply for the travel document um, if you are, if you qualify for an adjustment of status um, application. So, um, yeah, so definitely do not travel if you have a pending I-130, um, especially if you have overstayed um, your visa. So let's see. Um, so Ravine Singh, um, good night. If a person goes to America with a visa and gets deported, 
What should they do if they want to get back? There are waivers available, and so that might be an option, but that's highly complex just because it depends on the facts involved. So if you really would like to return to the United States, give me a call at 561-405-4889, schedule a consultation. Uh, so Miss Lady 01, if you email the embassy about your visitor's visa, will they pinpoint you in the future? So it depends on what you're emailing them about. If it's an innocent question, um, you know, that about the status of your, your visa, then um, not necessarily. But if it's something that's going to go on their radar, like, hey, um, what happens if I got arrested? Then that could def possibly um, go on their radar and um, come back to bite you in the butt. What you are um, better off doing is consulting an attorney if you would like to ask questions about something that may disqualify you or something in the past. But if it's an, an innocent question like, when can I expect my visa um, or something of that sort, then, um, then not necessarily. Maxine White, thanks for sharing the live. Uh, so... Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, so user one seven nine nine. What if the green card parent's not working? file for you while someone stands um, the affidavit of support. Yeah, so definitely the green card parent can file for you and then someone can stand in as a, uh, for the affidavit of support. However, keep in mind that if the green card parent is filing for you, you want to make sure you qualify. And if you're in the United States, you definitely want to make sure that you go about it properly because um, you may not qualify for adjustment of status to apply for the green card in the U.S. So, um, Mon, uh, Monom, Mestan, Mono. So, uh, sometimes I have a hard time um, getting through these names because I know that there are either two names put together or nicknames. So, um, I'm going to just go with the first three, which is Mon. Um, where are you located? So I'm in Boca Raton, Florida, but I represent clients all over the country. So if you are, um, if you need immigration assistance, I can help you. Um, I can do, I do phone and video consultations for those who can't meet me in person. And once, um, once you become my client, uh, then uh, we work, I have a very efficient system to work with my clients to exchange documents and to file um, the applications. Hi there, Sandeep. Um, Ravine, Ravina, you're welcome. Um, Shara, Sharara. Um, if you go to the USA with a visa and overstay while overstay your permanent resident was in the process. Um, so you would have to qualify to apply for the green card in the United States. Otherwise, you're going to have to apply for a waiver for forgiveness to be able to leave and complete the green card process in your home country. It's very important that you um, figure out which way you qualify for so that you don't uh, run into any hiccups in the process. Um, so John Neil Whiteley, there is something before that question. Um, so Bright Sky 20, what if someone oversee their visa and their brother sponsors them? Do they have to go back? Yes. So definitely they would have to go back and have to go through the waiver process. Now, in order to qualify for the waiver, um, and the waiver is the forgiveness for overseeing, you'd have to also have a U.S. citizen or green card holder, spouse or parent, who will experience extreme hardships 
um, if you don't get the green card. So it's very specific. Um, Dean, thanks for sharing the live. Um, so John Neil Whiteley, I charming Rose, thanks for sharing the live. Can you retype John Neil Whiteley because I am getting a lot of questions and so I want to make sure I get to everyone. Uh, so just I, so I'm going downwards. So um, just go ahead and retype your question. And that goes for everyone who have, if I missed your question. Um, Sam, Sally, I'm so sorry, but I'm not seeing your question. I'm, I keep seeing you miss my question, but not seeing the question. So go ahead and type because sometimes it doesn't come across, especially if you lose connection and then you join again, um, it may not come across. So beauty place 758. Hi, if my green card application got closed because I never got the letter that was sent to me, how can, so go ahead and um, give us a call, schedule a consultation um, because it, it, you know, you're going to have to prove that, um, that you never got the letter and that is the good, it's their fault. And it could possibly um, lead to them uh, reopening the case, but it depends on your facts. So Audrey, hello, is an international mother with an American child can have a working permit to the US. Um, having a child alone is not going to qualify you for a work permit. You have to qualify for a green card through family and employer or through humanitarian means. So um, you would definitely have to weigh your options out. Um, if someone, and this is Walker, so if someone filed for you and they want to stop working, would it affect the paperwork? Possibly if they, when it comes to the affidavit of support, they'll need to show that they can support you and they have sufficient income to support you. So if they stop working, that you'll need to have a plan in place to have a sponsor, someone, a co-sponsor to step in and take um, take on that part. So Chrissy D1, can my employer get me a work permit while I'm in Jamaica? Uh, so the employer based, uh, you you know, it all depends. It depends on what, what you qualify for, who is the employer, what are the employer's needs, what are the needs of the country? So, um, you know, it, it all depends on the facts. Um, Miss Lady 01, I emailed the embassy about my status. Okay. So Nadia Kelly Persad, how could I get my visa to go to the US if my husband is a green card holder um, by sponsorship? So you could still try to, there's nothing that would stop you from getting the visa, but you'd have to show that you have strong, strong enough ties to be able to return to the country after visiting, um, especially if you have a, <coughs> a pending green card application. Jan 47794, can a green card holder file for their dad and how long will it take? Uh, so no, green card holders can't file for parents. Only US citizens can file for their parents. Ms. Des, flawless, thanks for sharing. So uh, let's see. Miss Lady, will the embassy pinpoint me if I ask about my status in the future? So I'm not sure. Uh, it depends on your question. And I, I don't know what your question is. So do you help international students through their H-1B and do you advise them specific companies? So um, as an immigration attorney, I definitely help with the H-1B process, but I don't uh, help individuals to find employers um, and usually it's the employer that hires me for the h1b and not the um not the the actual employee so uh force ripe sounds thanks for sharing uh the video um malika leon thanks for sharing um nadia if i want to go to school in the usa will i be able to if you meet the requirements for the um, student visa, whatever student visa you're applying for, and it all depends on your particular circumstances. The question, I, Miss Lady, the question I asked, what what's the status means? Um, what is the status means the validity of the visa? 
So um, I tell you, I can't advise you on, on that. What I would say is consult an attorney um, because you don't want to be asking them uh, about, I, I don't know if you're asking them what is the, what if your visa is still valid. But what I would do is make sure that you understand your rights before you contact the embassy directly and put yourself on their radar. So that's what you can do. And if you need advice, you can always give me a call at 561-405-4889 and um, schedule a consultation. And then if, if it, you're worried about the consequences of something or whether your visa is, is still valid after uh, uh, an event or after an issue, then you'd want to talk to an attorney first. So Yulisa official, my I-94 expired. Can I travel domestically within the US while awaiting the I-130? Um, yes, you can. The risk is low that anything, you know, they rarely have eyes picking up people at the airport. Um, and you can use your passport in the meantime to travel. Um, Chrissy D1, on, um, I'm on a B2 visa with a newborn. Um, how long can the baby stay in Jamaica? So, I'm not sure. So with the, the newborn, so you have to check with the, the um, so you said a B2 visa with a newborn. So I'm not sure if this is um, an American baby and you have the B2 visa. What you can do is you can contact the Jamaican, so the Jamaican, um, uh, you know, the Jamaican embassy and ask them to issue you, your baby. Uh, it's, it's called like an unconditional stay, sort of like a green card for Americans. Um, what you'll have to do is go through that process if your baby needs to live in Jamaica with you. Asked by 501, can my fiance and I get married while um, his green card? Yes, so you can get married um, to a green card holder uh, and that should be fine. Yeah, and your green card holder spouse can even uh, uh, sponsor you. But um, keep in mind though that a green card holder cannot file uh, for the fiance visa. They can only file for their spouse. Uh, so force right, um, where is your office located? I'm located in Boca Raton, Florida. However, if you are, um, I represent clients in all 50 states and internationally. So it doesn't matter where you are, I can represent you. And um, I do video and phone consultations. Um, Holla chips. If a child is born in the USA, can the parents become a resident in the US? Um, not automatically. Just because a child is born in the US doesn't automatically qualify them for residence. However, when the child turns 21, they can um, apply for the parents. But unfortunately, parents aren't just given automatically given protection um, based on the, the child being American. So keep those questions coming. I am here to answer your questions. Um, Sam Sally, I am coming back to you to see if I can see your question. Um, if I can search through to see your questions until more questions come in. Uh, so let's see. So I am going through, but keep your questions coming. I'm just going through to um, see if I can spot Sam Salis' question. So Sam Sally, your question isn't here, but what happens is if you lose connection um, for even a second, your question comes off as well. So go ahead and retype ASAP and then I'll see if I can get to your question. Um, I'm so sorry I missed your question, but it's just not, it's such a pain. Um, Holla chips, if I, I believe I answered that. 
Um, so I got denied at my visa interview and my information and reason to travel was good. So, you know, unfortunate, well, unfortunately, the officers have a broad discretion to deny um, just based on their, um, their, whether you convince them. And so if they even have an inkling that you are at risk for overstaying in the United States and not returning to your country, they, um, they, they have the right to deny, unfortunately. That's why the evidence has to be so strong going in. If you overstay your visa, can you get married to a resident to get through? So uh, you wouldn't qualify to stay in the U.S. and apply for the green card by marrying a resident. Um, you could do that with a U.S. citizen, but not a resident. Um, the, you would have to go apply for a waiver, and then once the waiver is approved, go to your home country and complete the green card process there. Um, DJ Bill Gates, if someone is here on a visitation visa, can they upgrade to a visa with a work permit? Um, yes, so they would have to qualify, of course, but that is a possibility. Sexy403, um, thanks for following. Itunis, hi, if I brought my stepdaughter to the US with a visa and it seems to be um, cut off, let's see. So it's cut off, I don't see. So Etonis, if you are a US citizen, you got married to your stepdaughter's, um, your stepdaughter's parent before your stepdaughter turned 18 and she's under 21 and unmarried, then um, she could complete the green card process in the US generally. But I would have, you know, it's always best to get legal advice to get specific um, information uh, related to your case. Pavrite, um, Pavrite, is there is there any way I can get to return to America and my green card is still active, please? Well, it depends on why you're outside of the United States. It's a possibility, but it depends on what the facts are. Donna Little 66, um, can you comment on sibling sponsorship? So sibling, a US citizen sibling can sponsor another sibling. It is taking very long, so it's not a quick solution, and it definitely isn't a quick solution for a sibling who's already in the U.S. and undocumented. Um, it's taking a minimum of 14 years right now, and unless something changes in the law, um, you would have to be heavily invested in the process to get through it. Um, but that's the downside. But if it's the last option, the only option, why not? Um, you just have to wait a very long time. Um, Col Colken, uh, West William, hi, if filing started before the person reaches 21, can this affect the filing process? It depends on what uh, type of application you're filing. Um, so that would be the first thing. Uh, how can I apply for permanent status, um, Etonis? That's a very broad question. There are different ways to do it through an employer. The most common way is through family. Money, Gizzle, A, thanks for the gift. So the most common way is through family. Um, there's also humanitarian. So if you're free to return to your country, um, that is not a direct path to, to permanent residence, but it gives you temporary status and a path to a green card. Um, DJ Bill Gates, thanks for following. Um, instrumental Don, yes, I am Jamaican. Sexy four three, where's your office? I am in Boca Raton, Florida, but I represent my clients all over the country and um, I offer phone and video consultations. You can call me, and any this is for anybody who would like to get um, legal advice, specific legal advice, because all the information I'm giving is general information. Call 561-405-4889. You can also go to the link in my bio where it will lead you to the website where my information is, the phone number, as well as the web form. You, if you fill out that contact form, the scheduling coordinator at the law firm will call you and schedule, put you on my calendar. Um, so passion, you're welcome, Sexy403, Don, 
Donna Little, you're welcome. DJ Bill Gates, you're welcome. Um, is there any way I can get a green card while I'm here in another here in another country? Yes, through family or an employer. Um, but it how which way works for you depends on who do you have a qualifying relative? Do you have an employer who's willing to sponsor you? Um, passion of beauty too. Are you saying you can get a green card? without being um, married. So through employment, um, there you, you can, but you have to qualify. And em qualifying for the employment-based green card, it just depends on what how you qualify individually. Um, you can get a green card through a parent, through a, a sibling, which but takes very long, through, um, a child who's 21 and up, a citizen child who's 21 and up. So those are ways that you can get the green card without being married, but you have to qualify for it. So you ha if you're doing it through employment, for example, the extraordinary ability green card, you have to show that you're at the top of your field through you know showing that you're well known internationally and nationally to be able to get the extraordinary ability green card. So, um, you know, if you are serious about applying for the green card, schedule a consultation with me and we can go through that to see what you would qualify for. Money Gizzle, thanks for the gifts. Hollow chips, apart from the child reaching 21 years, is there any other way the parents can become a resident? At this time, no, it, it is um, just that. They have to be 21. I know it's a big hole in the um the system right now and um you know on for hopefully the law can change to help to protect um parents of US citizens but that is how it is. So can my fiance bring her 20 year old with her while I file for K1? Um yeah, yes. Um however, keep in mind that once she turns 21 and if she didn't get the um fiance the the K-1 that she could age out. So age out as in she would no longer qualify as a child of your fiance. Colkin West William person is now over 21 before the filing was completed. So does that mean all the funds is lost? So if you're talking about funds, it means uh, the application fees, then yes. So Sam Sally, okay, I give up. Thanks for looking. Oh no, okay. Well, hopefully I catch you um at another show i don't know why your question isn't co the only question that's coming across sam S sally is well not question your comments is the fact that i'm missing your question so i don't know why because i'm going through this very carefully and i'm still not seeing your question it could be a TikTok thing um passion of beauty too thanks for following jelly fruit jelly fruit kid i did my consultation with you and was comfortable. Awesome. I'm so glad. Um, th and thank you for that. Um, user 463, as a Canadian citizen, how can you get green card in um, the US? So you would have to um, qualify for the green card like everybody else. So through family, through an employer, um, there's no, there are no ways for Canadian citizens to get the green card. So Donna Little 66, in addition to my sibling sponsorship and time frame, is it ad advisable to apply for adjustment of status? So um, you would not be able to apply for adjustment of status through a sibling unless you had you at the time that your you know at the time that an immigrant visa number became available, that it was time for you to finish out the process, you still maintained legal status in the United States, uh, which is very do um, over, you know, a minimum of 14 years. Um, so if you get a reply letter from USAS, but there is a typo error, is that a problem? It depends on what the typo error is. So um, you would have to be more specific. If the typo is your name, um, or something of the sort, then you'd want to uh, see if you can get in touch with them to get it corrected. So original <clears throat> Dolphus, how someone get a green card if they overstayed? So through family, it's usually, if they overstayed and they're in the United States, 
um, meaning you don't no longer have your status, you're going to have to get it through your U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident. Um, I'm sorry, you have to be the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, as in the spouse, the parent, and um, if you are, if you're do doing it through your parent, you have to be um, under 21 and unmarried and or a, a, ch a child. So who is, and the child has to be 21 and over. So hollow chips, what is the probability of winning the green card lottery? So I don't have a specific um, number probability um, but if it's your last choice, then um, definitely, you know, it wouldn't hurt if you're outside of the country, even if you're in the U.S., but if you're in the U.S., then you'd have to maintain um, legal status to be able to finish out that um, green card lottery. Donna Little, you're welcome. Um, the error is incorrect spelling of the name. So what you would need to do is get in touch with the USCIS and um, make sure that they um, find call the customer service line and get instructions on how to correct the name um, if they can do it by phone um, usually they accept that in writing so um, but it depends on what type of application you're filing um, so charming rose it's nice to see you um, cool king 501 thanks for joining in so keep your questions coming. I am going to close out soon, um, but these were all great questions. Um, for those of you, I missed your question. Sometimes that happens with TikTok. Uh, some of those questions don't come across and I don't know why that happens. Um, but I am here every day. So hang on to your question. If you're listening to me and you, uh, your question, you know that your question is going to be very specific or you, you know, you absolutely know you're going to need, um, specific legal advice. Give me a call at 561-405-4889. My number is plastered, plastered all over my videos. And you can also go to the link in my bio where you can um, get my contact information to get in touch with the office. Um, during office hours, which is 8.30 to 6.30, I do, um, the, the website does have online chat, so that's an option for you. And uh, the contact form, you can complete it, we'll get in touch with you. The scheduling coordinator will get in touch with you and um, uh, schedule a consultation. After hours, which is 6.30, if you call um, after hours, you can call at any time. What's going to happen is the after hours receptionist will take good care of you, take your name, your number, and then the scheduling coordinator will get back to you um, the, fo the following business day to schedule the consultation. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. If I missed your question, hang on to it. Fred Meta, I think that's where is your office. It's in Boca Raton, Florida, but I represent clients all over the country. Um, we work with the USCIS offices all over the country. So um, we're definitely experienced at that and um, can work with you on your issue. Have a good night, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.